If you're watching this video, then you might be looking to take the plunge and buy your first luxury watch, which is a incredible experience, but at the same time, it can be quite overwhelming. I mean, there's so many variations and options to choose between. So in this video, we're going to be trying to help give a steer as much as possible and cover the best watches that you can buy for your first luxury watch. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And before we start this video, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button to help a fellow watch nerd out, I really appreciate it. And let's crack straight into to number one, um, as my tea's cooling, because it's far too warm. But this was released in 2024 this year, and definitely is one of the safest options for a first luxury watch. This is the Amiga Aquaterra Black Lacquer commonly nicknamed as the Black Pearl. The Amiga Aquaterra has definitely taken first place in terms of versatility. It has the perfect combination of dress and sportiness combined to make this beautiful hybrid baby. Now the black lacquer dial on this model as well gives it a definite all round feel and approach. These models have been released in three different sizes. You have a 41, a 38, and also you have a 34 millimeter variant. Now I have 6.5 inch wrists and to me, I would definitely steer towards the 38 mil model. So this model of course comes in stainless steel and it has a pretty perfect combination of brushed and polished. It definitely leans more towards the dressy side but has a lot of that sporty feel coming through. It comes in at 38 millimeters as discussed. It has a lug to lug of 45.1 millimeters and a thickness of 12 millimeters. Between those lugs is around about 19 millimeters. This watch is water resistant to 150 meters, has sapphire crystal glass with anti-reflective coating on both sides and also a perfect perfectly symmetrical, perfectly formed date window at the six o'clock mark. And you guys know, you guys know how I feel about six o'clock date windows. They're the gold. The movement in this model is the caliber 8800, and this is a self-winding movement with a co-actual escapement, and it's certified by master chronometer, approved by Metas, and resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss. It also has a power reserve of 55 hours. Now these models come in at 6,200 pounds, so they're definitely not cheap. However, with a model like this that isn't too bold, too vibrant, it doesn't scream too loud, it definitely lasts a very, very long time. And one thing that I love about the luxury watch industry, if you get a contemporary, quite muted design, it truly lasts through the ages. So this watch would be a perfect watch for your first watch. Sticking on with the theme of Amiga, because there is another iconic watch that has true iconic status, it's the Speedmaster. Now the Amiga Speedmaster was the first watch on the moon, accompanied Buzz Aldrin on that journey to the moon, and that's a pretty impressive title to hold. Now you do have two variants of the Amiga Speedmaster professional moon watch to choose between. You either have a Hesalite version, which is the original material that they used in the mission to the moon, or you have a sapphire crystal option. Now I would suggest for you guys, um, to go for the sapphire crystal option. It definitely doesn't scratch half as easy as Hesalite. With that said, Hesalite does buff out really, really nicely. So it really depends on what you guys want out of your watch. If you want durability, definitely go for the sapphire crystal glass option. Now, the model that I would suggest specifically for you guys, if you were looking at this model, is definitely the Speedmaster Moon Watch Professional Black dial with the sapphire crystal. Now we call it a sapphire sandwich because it has sapphire crystal on the top and also on the bottom. The Speedmaster Professional comes in at 42 millimeters in diameter and between those lugs you have about 20 millimeters. The lug to lug is 47.5 millimeters and the thickness is 13.2 millimeters. Now, something that I do like about this watch is it actually has the Amiga Caliber 3861 movement, and this is a fully manual wound movement, so it's not automatic, it doesn't have that rotor in the back. This manual winding movement is certified by Master Chronometer, approved by Metas, and resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss. It also has a power reserve of 50 hours. Now, the Moon Watch is definitely one of the most expensive watches that we're gonna cover in this video. It comes in at 7,600 pounds, and that's if you're to get the white dial sapphire sandwich, but it is slightly lower if you go for the black dial. So whatever floats your boat, but it's an iconic staple in the industry and an iconic first watch. Next on the list, we have an IWC, one of the icons of the air with the big pilot. And then they released the engineer kind of, was it last year? God, I'm getting old. It might have been last year, but that was a total icon in the industry. But one thing that I selected, one watch that I selected that I think is such a good all-rounder but still remains very IWC is the Mark XX. 
The IWC Pilots Watch Mark XX brings all the pilot heritage, but makes it a lot more wearable and a lot more versatile, and also is a lot safer of an option. This variant comes in at 40 millimeters. It comes in at 10.8 millimeters in height. It's water resistant to 10 bar and it comes in full stainless steel. Now you do have an option between quite a shiny Jubilee-ish looking bracelet or a kind of more leather calfskin-y strap. And that kind of feeds back into the, the aerial heritage that that watch has. If it was me, I would definitely go for the calfskin or a NATO because I think when you have your first watch, you want to wear it all the time and you don't want to be worried about getting the bracelet scratched. So having a NATO or something that you won't be as afraid of scratching means you'll be more comfortable to wear it. The numerals on this watch are big and bold and it has a date window at the three o'clock mark. It is just a very Instagrammable watch. I would say it's a little bit of a plain Jane and that's not a bad thing. This is a very strikingly good looking watch, but it's minimized, it's everything's stripped down, it's stripped back to its basic function. And I think that's a good thing. The movement on this watch is the 32111 caliber and this is an IWC manufactured movement. It's of course fully automatic and has 120 hours of power. Now just think of that for a second, 120 hours of power shoved in to 10.8 millimeters in case thickness. That's mental. Now, if you want to go for the more leather strap option, it does come in at 5,050 pounds. So it's not cheap again, but this is definitely a very, very versatile watch that you can wear literally anywhere. Up next, we have a pretty big bang from Grand Seiko. Now, when I was working in Edinburgh, the amount of university students that would come in and speak to me, they might have seen the YouTube channel or my Instagram um, or whatever it is, and they'd always ask about Grand Seiko. And the one that I would always recommend is the Grand Seiko Snowflake. The case and the bracelet of these watches are made with high intensity titanium, and it gives the case and the bracelet a little bit of a darker aesthetic. Typically, titanium is that little bit more dark than stainless steel, and if you've got a keen eye, you can definitely see this. Now, if you compare that to the textured, beautiful white dial, it pops out so much more. And I have said this in multiple videos, Grand Seiko truly are the king of dials. The case diameter on this watch comes in at 41 millimeters and it comes in at 12.5 millimeters in thickness. The lug width comes in at about 20 millimeters and it does have a three fold clasp bracelet with a push button release. But what's more impressive than that, especially when you're buying your first watch and you want to get totally engrossed in the watch industry is the spring drive movement. I mean, it's patented by Grand Seiko, and it's unbelievable. This movement is accurate to plus 15 seconds per month or plus one second per day, i.e. it's pretty bloody accurate. The movement in this model is the Caliber 9R65 and it is a spring drive movement with 72 hours of power. Now, this is quite complicated and I have gone over it in other videos, but just imagine this, it's a hybrid car engine in a watch. It takes the best of quartz, it takes the best of automatic, and it shoves them in the same movement. Essentially, that's what it's doing. I could go more into detail, uh, and I probably will in another video, so stay tuned for that. But it's, it's a work of art. This thing is mental. Again, it's not cheap. It comes in at 5,800 pounds, which is a lot of money, but you're getting Japanese precision at its finest. It wouldn't be an iconic watch video without talking about Rolex, and I'm sorry guys, I know you're probably bored of it, but the Oyster Perpetual from Rolex, being their more entry level watch, is definitely one that will resonate with a lot of people. It is a true all-rounder. There are tons of different variations of this watch, tons of different sizes to go for, but definitely I would go for either the 41 or the 36, and that's because I have 6.5 inch wrists. It comes in at 41 millimeters, has scratch resistant sapphire crystal glass, and is waterproof to 100 meters. The movement in this watch is the caliber 3230 from Rolex, and this is accurate to minus two to plus two seconds per day. It has a bi-directional self-winding rotor, and this has approximately 70 hours of power. Now, when people are looking for their first watch, Rolex is definitely the go-to. I mean, it's the brand that everybody's heard of, even if they don't know watches. But when you look a little bit deeper, that's when you start to discover all these other brands that have brilliant, incredible histories and are icons in their own right. But you can't deny that Rolex is an icon. It just is. And this is a great first watch.
Now, if you can get this new, it comes in at £5,550, but that's difficult because it's Rolex. So, uh, I mean, err on the side of ca caution there. You might be waiting for six months. You might be waiting for two years. It depends on the Rolex that you want, and it depends on the AD you go to. So, it's your choice, but... If you want to wait, this is still a fantastic model. The next brand we're going to cover is Tudor. We're going to dive into the realm of Tudor with the Black Bay Monochrome, the GOAT watch that was released this year. The Black Bay Monochrome, and again, I keep repeating this word, but it's just the perfect all-rounder. It's discreet, it's subtle, it draws the eye, but it doesn't scream too loud. It is literally unbelievable. Now, remember that Rolex are the parent company to Tudor, so you definitely see a lot of the same standards being adhered to. The quality of Tudors are brilliant. And on that, the one day, the one day I'm talking about Tudor, I don't wear my Tudor. On that note, what is on your wrist today? I'm wearing the Christopher Ward 12 at the moment. Please let me know what you're wearing in the comments. It's the Chisholm Hunter tradition spanning back two and a half years now. Believe it or not, I had a full head of hair when I started this channel. Crazy how times change. The Tudor Black Bay Monochrome comes in at 41 millimeters, and this is pretty perfect for my 6.5 inch wrists. It comes in at 13.6 millimeters in thickness, and its lugs come in at about 21 millimeters. It has 70 hours of power, and it has the manufacturer caliber MT5602-U. And this is a self-winding movement with a bi-directional rotor system, and it's also COSC and METAS certified. It's water resistant to 200 meters, and I could keep going. I, I'm just, this watch is unbelievable. This watch comes in at £3,910, so significantly cheaper than the, the previous watches that we've talked about, but they do have incremental price increases, as do all brands every year. I remember the days that the Tudor Black Bays were selling for around about £2,500. That's how old I'm getting. <laughs> Carrying on with the theme of Tudor, because this is very, very relevant. If you are looking for a chrono watch for your first chrono model, then the new blue Tudor Black Bay chrono is definitely a good place to go. This is a boutique only edition and it's a brilliant boutique only edition. Reason being is that it's so damn popular. The Tudor Black Bay chrono in blue comes in at 41 millimeters. It of course comes in full stainless steel and it has a case thickness of 14.4 millimeters. So it is quite thick. The movement in this model is the caliber MT5813. And this of course has chronograph functionality and a self-winding mechanical movement. It has approximately 70 hours of power and is waterproof to 200 meters. If you were looking for a chrono model, and that's definitely the one that you're set on for your first watch, this is a really good place to go. Now it is quite expensive. It does come in at 4,880 pounds, but when you compare that to other chrono models within the same kind of space, this the same level as Tudor, it's actually quite fairly priced. Next on the list is a banging brand. And every, it's actually a running joke now because I keep calling them banging and everyone just comments bang when I talk about Longines, but they are a banging brand. They have banging releases. They are just banging. I mean, the last four releases, I would say from Longines have been unbelievable and they keep hitting. They keep hitting. Now, the watch we're going to talk about next is the Longines Hydro Conquest GMT. This watch, hands down, is one of the most popular watches that I can see across the industry now. It Honestly, the upgrades that they made from the original Longines were just amazing. Now, you do have a ton of different variants to choose between with this watch. You have a ton of different colors and all that good stuff, so we'll put them up on the screen at the moment. But remember that this is a GMT model, so it reads multiple time zones at the one time. Now, the reason that I've included this is that if you are a traveler, if you travel a lot for work, then a GMT is the perfect watch to have. And actually, on that note, after I get the moon watch, I'm looking for a GMT model. I'm a photographer and videographer. I do travel a lot, so it makes sense with my lifestyle. This watch comes in at 41 millimeters, 12.9 millimeters in thickness and 49.4 millimeters lug to lug. It has scratch resistant sapphire crystal glass with anti-reflective coating. And it of course comes in full stainless steel. I just love the pops of orange on this watch against that black dial. I love the more aggressive looking bezel. I love the upgrades to the bracelet that they've made. I just love this watch. Now it does come in at 2,750 pounds. So again, it's a lot cheaper than that Tudor or the Rolex or the Amigas that we've talked about. We have two honorable mentions before we move on because um, I feel like I have a, 
uh, a total bias, but also a place to, to talk about them because they are extremely popular and people want that 70s inspired design. So firstly, you have the Christopher Ward 12. What is on my wrist today? Christopher Ward is making tons of big bangs in the industry and their quality is very, very good for what you get, especially on the 70s inspired 12 that I've got at the moment. And the second watch is the Tissot PRX, a range of watches that when they were released, it honestly made such a huge impact on the industry. Never before could you get a 70s inspired, 70s designed watch like that for that price. It was really quite massive in the industry. And they're both very popular watches at very affordable prices that I would have a look at. I don't wanna bore you, so I won't go too much into detail about them, but they are honestly, very, very good. The next watch is a brand that definitely appeal more to the younger market, and that's not a bad thing. I think Tag Heuer, as a brand, uh, made their big impact by appealing to the younger market, and that's not a bad thing. Again, I'm gonna repeat myself. It only gets more watch enthusiasts into the industry. I mean, you saw it when Tag Heuer had Liam Hemsworth for Cara Delevingne as their ambassadors. That got a younger demographic into the industry. My brother's first watch, or first luxury watch, was a, was a Tag Heuer, and I definitely have been sold on the Tag Heuer name. I think they have a ton of history. But not only that, they're now focusing and honing in on their movements. And that's why I'm including this Tag Heuer. This is the new Tag Heuer Aqua Racer Professional 300, and they come in two different variations. You have a 36 millimeter variation or a 42 millimeter variation. The movements in these watch are the new TH31-00 caliber, and the new TH31 is in the Professional 342 millimeter model. And it's a COSC certified movement that offers accuracy and reliability with a power reserve of 80 hours. These models have this beautiful wave texture and pattern pattern running through the dials that gives it so much depth, it just looks unbelievable. These models are definitely more sporty and feed into the more active lifestyle, but at the same time, they have the versatility to be worn with a suit, to be worn with a t-shirt and tracky bottoms. Tag kind of has a flexible nature of sticking to all categories, and that's why I've included them. Now, these watches are that little bit more expensive because they have that new movement, and you can get a couple of dial variations. You can go for a green, a black with this beautiful pale blue hand. It pops out so much against that dial, or you can go for a blue. And if you want to, you can change to have a rubber strap or a bracelet. But if you want the versatility aspect, I would suggest going for the bracelet. And on that note, guys, I need to go and blow my nose because I'm definitely getting a cold, so I do apologize. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button before you head off and then follow us on Instagram at Chisholm Hunter Watches or my Instagram at HP Life Lens or our podcast at Into The Mind Podcast. And I'll see you guys real soon.